In this section, I'll be giving you a brief overview of the Autotune 8 interface. Autotune has two completely separate tuning modes. The first mode that we're looking at right now is called Automatic Mode, where Autotune can automatically correct the pitch of our incoming audio signal. If we want more refined control, we also have a graphical mode where we can manually correct individual notes. We can switch between the two modes in the top right corner in the Correction Mode section. The upper section of the Autotune interface contains our common controls. The common controls are active in both the automatic and graphical mode. We can see that these controls remain active even when switching between the two modes. The common controls are used to tell Autotune how it will detect the incoming audio. These are the first controls that we adjust when opening up Autotune on a track. The input type is where we specify the range of pitch that we'll be sending into Autotune. Our choices are soprano for high female voices, alto and tenor for average female voices and higher male voices. We have low male for low male voices. We have instrument and we have bass instrument. It's very important to choose the correct input type since it restricts the range of pitches that Autotune will detect. If bass instrument is selected, it will extend Autotune's detection range down to 25 Hz, but in turn, it will also restrict the upper range where it can detect high notes. In the previous section, we talked about white noise and how it's not periodic or a repeating signal, similar to our breath noise. When we have a soft, breathy vocal part, it introduces a lot of that type of signal in with our pitch. For this, we have our tracking control. For the most part, leaving this set at the default value of 50 will work fine for most average vocal parts. This setting tells Autotune how sensitive it needs to listen for our pitch. If it's a very breathy vocal or a noisy recording, you may need to decrease the tracking value to a lower number by moving the knob to the right. If we move it too much towards the relax setting, it can introduce some other audio issues like clicking and popping. So if Autotune isn't having any trouble detecting your pitch, it's typically okay to leave this setting at 50. The reference pitch is only active if Autotune is on a stereo track. This setting tells Autotune which side of the stereo recording it will be listening to for its pitch reference. This setting will be grayed out if it's on a mono track like it is in this case. The low latency button is new in Autotune 8. We'll be covering more in the next section, but essentially we will only turn this on if we're going to be using it for a live performance or if we're using Autotune while we track. You'll typically leave this setting off if you're using Autotune during mixdown. The key and scale selectors tell Autotune what our reference key is for the song. The default setting is C for the key and chromatic for the scale. If you aren't sure what key your song is in, this is a good overall setting. In the scale selection, not only do we have the equal temperament modes like major, minor, and chromatic, but we also have a variety of different eastern scales, historic scales, and microtonal scales. Now one thing we'll need to make note of when choosing the scale and key is that sometimes we'll be forced to choose an enharmonic note. Autotune tries to keep the keys as simple as possible to avoid having double sharps and double flats, and other enharmonic notes in the scale such as C flat, E sharp, F flat, and B sharp. So for instance, if we have a song and its key is in D sharp major, which also has an F double sharp in the scale, you will need to choose E flat instead, which will still sound the same, it's just notated differently. Say for instance we're singing along with an instrument that's not tuned to a correct reference pitch. We have a scale detune knob that allows us to put the vocal in tune with that instrument by either raising it or lowering it. It will affect the entire pitch of our vocal part, so you'll only need to adjust this setting if the instruments behind the vocal aren't in perfect tune. Our transpose knob will move the pitch of our incoming audio up or down by half steps. If you have a song that was recorded in the key of G, but the vocal was sung in A flat, we can transpose the vocal down by a half step to match the key of our song. The forming control enables the pitch correction to keep the tonality of our original voice. If you've ever heard a record play at high speed, you'll hear that the voices sound like chipmunks. Engaging the formant control gets rid of the chipmunk sound and makes it more natural. You'll really only need to engage the formant setting if you're going to be making extreme changes to the vocal pitch. Engaging it also enables the throat control though, which can create some incredible vocal effects. By moving this up or down, it simulates the size of the singer's throat. If we move it up for instance, our vocal will still be sung in tune, but it sounds like it's coming from a larger person. If we lower it, it will give us that chipmunk sound. And in the upper right corner we have our options. The most important option in here is our buffer size. What this buffer size does is it tells Autotune how much memory it's going to use to store our audio data that's coming into Autotune. If this setting is set too low, it will cause our program to crash. And if it's set too high, 
it may result in memory issues coming from our computer. The best way to set this is to determine how many seconds of audio are in your song, and then just add that number of seconds to this box. So if our song is three minutes long, that would be 180 seconds. But you should be able to set this to 2,000 or 3,000 without any major issues. The undo section tells us how many times we're allowed to undo something. In order to undo a change, it needs to store those changes in memory. The number of undos is set to 10 by default, but if you need more, you can certainly increase it at the expense of using more memory in your computer. The knob control tells us how our mouse will react to the knobs on the interface. If it's linear and you click and hold, you can move your mouse up and down. If we have it set to circular, you actually have to turn your mouse in a circular motion. And the follow host button will tell auto-tune to use the setting that your recording program uses. The next two sections are settings that we use in graphical mode. We'll certainly dive into these a little bit later once we start looking at graphical mode editing. These retune speeds are also options for graphical mode. Now auto-tune will also respond to key commands and that's what our key bindings do. These let you assign different functions to the number keys on your keyboard. You can change them by clicking on it and then selecting a new function. And down below, the window size tells us how large we want our plugin window to be. So that's all for this section. In the next section, we'll be going over the new features of AutoTune 8.